The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. And you have a mixed market slightly in the red this morning. We were higher pre-market overnight up to a high of 56.41 in the S&Ps. That was just prior to about 4 a.m. Eastern time. As I was getting ready for the program, even just in the last hour, we had markets in the green. We've trailed off a bit. We're coming into the lows we made at about 4.30 in the morning, right almost to the tick. Right now, s and is negative by just two points, trading at 56.27. NASDAQ 100. Boy, all these markets, right? Quite the accelerations yesterday. We'll talk about gold having its moment yet again. But the NASDAQ 100, negative by 28 to kick off the trading session. That's just more than one-tenth percent in the red. You get the Dow off 32 points, just under 41,000 on the futures, 40,988. And the Russell flat this morning at 2176. Bitcoin. Up 1500 bucks, 60655 Crude continuing to struggle. We got lower prices in crude. Down 12 pennies at 73.54, but we are a buck higher than where we were at about 4.30. You were approaching $72 in the price of crude this morning, 73.59 right now. We got to talk about gold. You talk about it, man. Gold, 25.68. Yeah, that's an all-time high this morning, folks. That's it. Just now. Gold has never traded at the price that it traded at in the last 15 minutes. How about that, right? We live in interesting times, as they say. But, boy, it's real, man. Check out the run we've had since February, rising from about 2000 to 2568 gold, up more than 20% on the year. And, of course, that correlates to what we have going on across many markets. We jump over to the dollar. Uh, excuse me, yields first. Yields. What do we have? We got higher price and lower yield. It is dramatic, man, how we get these rip-roaring rallies in one way or the other. Just look. We're going to put this on a 20-day uh, for an hourly. Right? You get rip-roaring rallies one way or the other, and then the market will claw some of that back. Right? You go back to where we were on August 8th let alone the movements we had on August 5th. Nonetheless, right now we're sitting about 113.15. You have higher price, lower yield coming at you. And when you get lower yield in the 10-year, as we're approaching about 3.85%, you pull up the dollar, and this is going to drive gold if it continues, man. And gold could have its own little run aside from the dollar. Not completely separate, okay? But gold has held up very well, even when you've seen dollar strengthening. So what's happening is gold holds up well when the dollar strengthens, and when the dollar weakens, it takes off to the upside. But you don't get the same amount of pullback. So here's some context here, right? And we'll do this later in the program even. Look at where we are in the dollar since February, okay? The gold run, excuse me, the run in gold, yes, started basically February 29th, right? But look at what's happened in the dollar. There is not a one-way trend in the dollar, right? It's not like the dollar has weakened dramatically since February to cause the gold contract to have dramatic price appreciation to the tune of 20% over that time. Now, yes, it has definitely, definitely weakened since June, providing one more catalyst, okay? And that being kind of the run that we've seen take place from 2300 to 2550, that has been correlated to a dramatic weakening in the dollar. It's also been correlated to lower yields. So we've had lower yields come in the last couple months, right? As the market adopts that, hey, guess what? Cuts are coming down the line. We've had a weakening dollar in accordance with that, and we've had a rising gold contract. But look at the move prior to that, okay? This is a well-defined trend. We chopped around from April to July where we broke out of that area with the highs being about 2450. But boy, gold has behaved really well leading up to that. And, you know, all things considered, we'll see where the dollar goes from here. But you look at this chart going back to 2002, and the only time that the dollar has actually been above this price level is the last few years. Any time prior to that going back to 
2002, you're talking about 22 years, we've actually had a weaker dollar than where we are here. The point being, there is a very real possibility that as we cut, we're going to see a weakening dollar. Europe dealing with inflation to some degree still. They may keep their rates a little bit elevated. There's the possibility there. You might see a weakening dollar. Nothing, you know, I'm not talking about dollar going to 70. But it's not outlandish to see the dollar go to 90.95, and if that's the case, there's a very real deal that you know gold makes around to 27.50, maybe even 3,000. You look at this larger term picture. I was looking at this earlier this morning, saying, "Man, we're now really making a run that maybe this is a much longer term A to B, C to D formation. Your A point is somewhere where we begin the run. Call it 2000, 2001, almost right when my dad started the gold report. Pretty cool. And you make a run from about 225 bucks, 250 bucks in that range." Up to a high of about 1900 That's a run of about $1,650 would be your A to B leg. You pull back right to the 50% retracement. And if you're going to run again, that number's about 1100 You add it, it puts you at about 2750 right? And, yeah, you talk about an A to B, C to D playing out over the course of a quarter century, right? But, hey, nothing outlandish. And that would push gold about 200 bucks above where we're at right now. We'll see where we go from there, but gold rocking this morning up another $23. We jump over to the volatility index, the VIX. So much for that spike on the carry, the carry trade. There's your spike to 65 bucks, 15.09. Now, that is a little bit elevated, right? It's interesting. We ended the day yesterday at 14.46. I showed you the pre-market. Pre-market, stocks were actually in the positive. We had a slightly elevated VIX. We're negative by three points on the S&P. Nonetheless, you got the VIX back above 15 in this market. We get some retail earnings tomorrow. The main event of the week, Chairman Powell speaking Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now, folks, our man Larry Pesavento, he does two live trading sessions a month. This month, they fall on the 9th and the 23rd. It's always the second and fourth month, excuse me, the second and fourth Friday of the month. He's going to be doing his live trading during Chairman Powell in Jackson Hole. Volatility can be a trader's best friend sometimes. It doesn't guarantee anything, folks. But that might be a special day. I encourage you to check it out. You can sign up for Larry's Live Trading Fridays. You can save 50 bucks off your first month. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Uh, and when you do that, you're signing up for at least – you get a couple classes in there. So you sign up. You know, you sign up now. You'll get the second Friday – excuse me, the second class of August. You'll get the first class of July, uh, September. Listen to me. And – yeah, it should be a cool day in terms of Friday. It lines up with Jackson Hole. And usually when the chairman speaks, he'll start talking at 10 a.m. But his remarks are going to be made, made public prior to that speech. So his remarks will be made public somewhere between the 9, 10 o'clock hour maybe. He comes on at 10 o'clock. We'll see where that goes. But, yeah, it should be an interesting one. Nonetheless, we've got the S&Ps right now. Negative by 3. NASDAQ negative by 38. Dow off by 32. And the Russell negative by 1 this morning. We jump over to Boeing. So, never ends with Boeing, man. Taking a look at the longer-term chart of Boeing. Yeah, you break out of there. You know, you bounce off the lows we had this year. Look at those earnings coming in both times to 160. We're trading at 179, but you lower by a couple dollars pre-market. And that has to do with the fact that they got problems. Yet again, they're pausing tests on the 777X, finding damage to one of the jet structures. Now, check it out. The new wide-body jets scheduled to start delivery in 2025. When were they originally supposed to start deliveries? 2020. Talk about problems at Boeing, man. I know they got a CEO. Maybe they'll put some on over there. Wait, problems getting in Boeing. We got a lot to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll talk some equities. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. There's no better time than now to sign up for Live Trading Fridays. Why is that? That's because the next trading session, this Friday, August 23rd, coincides with Jerome Powell's Jackson Hole speech. Chairman Powell's comments have the power to greatly move the market, and Larry is ready to capture those gains on the moves. Use code LARRYAUG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month. See you there, Tigers. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We have S&Ps negative by about three points right now. NASDAQ 100 negative by before we jump around to some of the big dogs out there. Amazon shares slightly in the red right now, 177.80 from about 178.22. You jump over to Apple shares this morning, slightly in the red by a few pennies, 225.70. We jump over to NVIDIA shares. Yeah, they back off a bit by a dollar. Quite a charge higher for NVIDIA yesterday from 125 to 130 to close the session. We jump over to Google shares. Yeah, they're going to be higher ah, by pennies. 168 and change about Microsoft shares right now. Basically flat. Meta shares down a bit to 527.70. We jump over to Tesla shares. So Tesla up to 226.85 in the pre-market from 222. We're a bit 225 is the number right now. So you're going to open a few dollars higher. And the news out there on Tesla. So the EU plans a 9% tariff on Tesla cars as China EV probe advances. Now, that's how Bloomberg puts it, okay? Here's how the journal puts the same one. Tesla gets a lower tariff rate as EU eases penalties on Chinese-made EVs. Now, Tesla is a Chinese-made EV because they're shipping so many potentially from China, okay? But Tesla's set to pay lower tariffs on the EV vehicles exported from China to the EU after the bloc revised penalties for car makers amid an investigation allegedly unfair subsidies from Beijing. So Tesla is now going to pay tariffs of 9%, down from almost 21%. It should matter. I mean, think about the impact that would have if Tesla was trading straight off the fundamentals. It's not, okay? Uh, the relief of the company, 
which has considered raising prices to offset it, follows new provisional tariffs on Chinese-made EVs launched by the EU in July. Now, check out some of these numbers, man. No, not there. All right, it's going to be in the Bloomberg one. Uh, but here they are, Chinese car makers BYD, Greeley, and SI, SAIC each have their duties lowered slightly, okay? But check out the numbers. BYD, 17% down from 17.4. Greeley, uh, Geely, Geely, 19.3 down from 19.9, and SAIC, 36.3 down from 37.6. The same rate as that of car makers that did not cooperate with the investigation. Quite a number, right, in terms of what they're paying. And I think this is the one that puts it in. Yeah, here they are. You talk about it, man. Quite a number. Now, yeah, and there they are again. 36.3, 19.3, and 17. Quite some tariffs, but you know what? Um yeah, they better bring it because the Chinese government is subsidizing, subsidizing those companies to a dramatic degree. So it's not a level playing field when you have the Chinese government subsidizing those companies to almost produce a loss. And this is why, you know, it gets a little interesting when you talk about Tesla dominating, competing. Man, they're going to have a lot of competitors in the arenas that they're coming in. Tesla, nonetheless, going to be a little bit positive by a few dollars today on that. All right, we jump over. What else we got going on? You got Lowe's. Uh, with their numbers, off a few dollars. Lowe's trading at 240 on the dot from 243. Now, you back things up for Lowe's. They got quite a pop on Home Depot earnings. Maybe that was last week around this volatility, potentially, I think it was. Uh, so you come in, 243, you're at 240. Longer term on Lowe's. It's been chopping around for a few years, right? We hit 263 at the end of 2021. We just just missed that number, hitting 262 earlier this year. We're trading at 243 for lows, but that's after quite an acceleration from 100 bucks coming into COVID. You jump over to Home Depot on their numbers. Home Depot backing off a bit as well with the market with the lows numbers. And to get into them, they cut the full year outlook as it expects home improvement sales to weaken. Yeah, it's a tough one, man, in terms of where the housing market goes, right? A lot of it, rate's going to determine things. You get a dramatic amount of cuts. People have access to the equity in their homes. Yeah, you may see home renovations. But Lowe's, it's interesting. We saw this in Home Depot. You know, people are foregoing some of those projects that you're doing, especially the larger ones. And now you have Lowe's saying that they said a lower than expected do-it-yourself sales. And that was actually where I believe Home Depot was saying, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're seeing people stay with, you know, you, you stay at home, do it yourself. But we're not seeing the big type of renovations of a new kitchen or a new bath remodel. Now you got Lowe's, <clears throat> excuse me, saying that they see lower than expected do it yourself sales. Yeah. Earnings just above revenue, just below 23.59 versus 23.9. Net sales dropped to just under $25 billion. Look at that. Year-over-year -year sales decline for the sixth straight quarter. That's quite a number, man. Can you imagine if a tech company was ever doing that? They're not a tech company. I get it. But nonetheless, year-over-year -year sales declines for a year and a half straight. Comp sales dropped 5.1%. Customers took on fewer discretionary home projects. And unfavorable favorable weather hurt them as well. Yeah, so Lowe's pulls back. Not exactly what you want to hear on their numbers. We jump over to Starbucks shares after they get a new CEO. You're trading right now at 91.97 off a bit. We check in on Chipotle after they lose their CEO. Trading at 52.52 right now. Check in on some of the airlines. Delta right now. Basically trading flat. It is interesting, the Boeing story. But I'd be careful on Boeing, man. You know, they, they might get a turnaround, and they're not going anywhere. Right? There's only two airplane makers in the world, Boeing and Airbus. America needs an airplane maker themselves. They wouldn't just secede the fact that you have the only airplane maker in the world being Airbus, a European company. That would not exist. You're going to have an American company that makes airplanes like Boeing. But boy, there is room to go lower, man. When you're trading at 179, we've hit 120 a couple times, and now they got uh, the Boeing 777X. With structural damage, they're not running test flights right now for all of them, and they were supposed to start deliveries next year after originally being 2020, being the year. Quite a number. All right, what else we got here? So we got a treat. Jacob's going to be coming back. He's going to be joining us after the 9.30 break. 
And what are we going to talk about here? Yeah, this one. They're talking about it in the den, man. And hopefully, you know, it's tough. You know, you hold out hope that people are okay. But, boy, as time goes, it's tough to imagine that they survived. But you got Morgan Stanley's international boss, Bloomer. You have Mike Lynch, the U.K. tech entrepreneur out there. And, um, yeah, this ties into fraud trials. It ties into Mike Lynch's partner, unfortunately, dying in a car wreck over the weekend. Looks to be just a coincidence. I know the saying. There's no such thing as coincidences, but that seems to be the case. A sad story nonetheless. 160-foot boat they're on. 160-foot boat. And it seems like that thing got hit by a water spout, broke the mast, they think. The boat sinks. There were 22 people on board, and six are still missing. And, yeah. 160 foot sailing boat pretty remarkable and they're trying to look and then they're in about 170 feet of water so it's very difficult to get to that boat down 170 feet below even on that distance all right come on back folks we're going to be coming back with jacob we're going to be talking about new carry trades we'll talk some eli Lilly when we get back as well we got a lot on stock of stay tuned folks we'll come back for the opening bell The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. we got markets open. You're looking at an S&P negative by three points right now, trading at 5627 markets, slightly in the red as we kick it off. And Jacob's going to be coming, folks. He's actually sending out 
a new issue of the Gold Report right now. Uh, he told me it's got some timely information out there, so it's got to get it published. He's going to be joining us later in the program. Uh, but for you Gold Report subscribers, keep your ears out. And if you're thinking about signing up for the Gold Report, great time to do it, folks. Check it out as we got gold rocking and rolling right now, up $26. We're making new highs as we speak, folks. Yeah, how about it? Let's put it on the minute. Look at that. This minute we're living in right now, folks, is the most expensive golds ever traded to 2570 in the history of our market planet world universe. 2570. You talk about it, man. Look at these numbers. Just blowing it away, man. Pretty remarkable. Continued strength for gold. We check in on the dollar right now with gold. Pushing, and you got the dollar. Yeah, weakening in a bit. 101.67. We check in on yields right now as you got gold pushing. And we got yields right now up by about seven basis points. That's correlating to a 10 year that's pushing 3.84%. 3.84% right now ahead of Friday. Chairman Powell, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And don't forget about Larry Live Trading, folks. Check it out. And you also get access to the archives. So you're signing up, you get a month of the live tradings. Two live trading sessions per a month. Normally, it's two ninety five. You save fifty bucks off your first month, so you get it for two forty five. You get the archives of the previous classes you can watch, and you kick it off with Friday live trading during the Jackson Hole speech that begins at ten a.m. Eastern time for Chairman Powell. And remember, those remarks usually become available prior to that speech. We jump over to Eli Lilly. They're trading a little bit higher today, up by about one point. Eli Lilly. We jump over to Eli Lilly. Where are we? Here we are. And shouldn't be too surprising, right? But they need the scientific evidence to back it up, especially when you're talking about prescription drugs. But the weight loss drugs sharply reduced diabetes progression. Yeah. And um, the drug also led to significant weight reduction. I would say they're probably related, folks. Okay. Preliminary data from a late stage study showed that weight loss drugs significantly reduced the risk of progression to type 2 diabetes among adults with prediabetes and obesity or overweight. Yeah, shouldn't be too surprising, but nonetheless, that's the case. You lose weight, diabetes is going to be impacted and the risk of progression. The drug also led to significant weight reduction at an average of 15 to 23 percent. Pretty remarkable. Compared to 2 percent on the placebo. That is quite a difference, right? And AI is the revolution, but these GLP drugs, man, this this is going to be a game changer. And it looks like they're really playing out. I don't know how the longer term impact goes, right? But we're going to find out because we're right in the midst of it. Nonetheless, you got Eli Lilly on that news, late stage trial, helping with diabetes. Yep, they even get a pop on the open. Look at that. We just opened at 2, 930. We're up to 940. And you want to talk about a longer term trend. How about this one, man? All right? You back it up year and a half ago we're at 300 we're pushing 942 you back it up even further than that and this thing is on a run from what 75 bucks in 2018 you talk about a run man look how few red bars we have in this even during covid right there's no bar man it's one way straight to the upside for Eli Lilly right now. And you look at it, you're popping even higher, up by two and a quarter percent right now. S&Ps get back into the green, up by one point right now. NASDAQ back into the green as well. A little bit of a pop on the open, 19,860 right now. We got to check back in on gold because we are rocking, up by a full percent to 2,567. Yeah, look at the GDX pushing $40. They're talking about that, up by one and a quarter percent, up by 50 pennies to 39.73. I mean, some of these gold stocks, folks, if you haven't checked out the gold report, check it out. And I'm just cherry picking stocks here, okay, jumping around. But the run that these equities have had, now you back it up, gold, okay, really breaks out about late February. You can see, chop around, chop around, chop around. March 1st it almost makes that move, okay, you, where you break from 2050 and it's a one way trip, 500 bucks higher. So you trade on the gold contract, you go from about 2000 to 2500. OK, you gain almost 25 percent, which is a substantial amount of money in that period of time. OK, gold up 25 percent of the metal itself. But you take a look at some of the equities and I'm just cherry picking. OK, but look at new gold. New gold is up what? A hundred plus percent over that period of time. You check out Harmony, right? Harmony up more than 100 percent over that time. Harmony is up 3.5 percent yet again today. Man, it just doesn't. 
Wheat and precious, me- precious metals, yeah, a little from 40 to up 50%, right? And this is why people love those gold equities, folks. Uh, Hecla, let's see how Hecla's doing. Yeah, look at that run. Even after the pullback from $3.60, 350 up to $6. This is why people love the gold report, folks, and gold equities in particular. Some of the ETFs that have those equities in them. The moves, when you get that type of move, you get a 20, 25% move in gold. Some of these equities trade to 100%. All right, pretty remarkable, man. And I was just jumping around. I was just, you know, cherry picking some of the names that are mentioned in the gold report, not recommending them in any degree. But if you're new to the gold report, you subscribe prior, I encourage you to check it out, man, because I don't think this is the end of the move. I don't. I think we still have a dollar that's sitting pretty healthily, pretty healthy, 101.69, right? And as I mentioned, on a longer term perspective, the only time the dollar has been stronger than where it is right now is around the 2000.com bubble and around the year 2022 when you could make the case that that was an extraordinary moment if you remember folks you back this up does, does three year get it yeah three year gets us up there we were the only game in town back then when we had the dollar trade at 115 europe hadn't started hiking rates yet the u.s inflation was first in the u.s versus everywhere else the fed was first to the game of hiking versus everywhere else yield in america was where to be everybody else is caught up to us okay and now we look to be the ones that are going to be cutting at a time when europe might have to stay a little bit higher and we'll see we do have the growth and that's going to play into things and we will see nonetheless dollar 10170 right now we got to jump over to the dollar yen as you take a look Come on, did we hit it? There we go. Yeah, that's quite a chart of the dollar yen, right? On a shorter term basis, dollar yen 104, excuse me, 146.26 right now. A little bit of volatility down to 145 on yesterday, back up to 147.50. Yeah, volatility everywhere in that index, but the S&P is right now sitting down just one point. All right, what else we got pulled up? So Jacob is going to be coming back like I talked about. He's just putting out a new issue of that gold report. If you're a subscriber, get ready for it. If you're not, come on over to the front page of TFNN, hit that newsletter tab, and check it out. All right, as we wrap it up on this segment, yeah, we talked about tariffs, talk about carries. Yeah, this one's it. Interesting. We all know how it happens, but seeing it on paper, man, pretty remarkable how the banks are hung out to dry. And they're going to get their fees eventually, all right? This is basically a loss leader for them. But it is pretty remarkable. The banks, they are on the hook for billions of dollars on that Twitter. And they can't sell the debt. And it's one of the biggest hung debt deals on their balance books that they've had in a while. All right, folks, stay tuned. we got our man Jacob. He'll be coming back to finish up the program. Markets in positive territory. Don't forget about Larry. This Friday, live trading during Jackson Hole. And check out that gold report as well, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. I'm filling in for Tommy O'Brien just on the last uh, segment. Here, we have a short one, of course, as well. Yeah, before we went to uh, the break, he was talking about the gold report. We just got uh, the new gold report by uh, Tom O'Brien out. Uh, we got some good stuff cooking in there. I, I really recommend checking it out. You can see the current portfolio performance. They're rocking right here. Um, yeah, there's no better time. I mean, gold, I know Tommy was talking about it, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But, I mean, we're really, we are reaching, you know, all-time highs. And you see Tom in the den. And, again, if you're not in the uh, Tiger's Den on Discord... You got to get in there, but as OB Tiger One says, gold is starting its next leg higher. A lot of good stuff looking out in that. Currently, we have the E-mini up about 0.06%. You have the SPY up about 0 0.04. And, uh, I mean, wow, what a bounce back from this area, right? And it just seems like we're going to go higher. You have Jerome Powell speaking Friday. We've been through this. Tommy spoke about it. Get in to Larry's live trading. That's going to be running concurrently with uh, Powell's speech, which is always, you know, a good time. So let's take a look here. First things first. Well, here, we can talk about this, actually. Let's look at CrowdStrike. Okay, so you have some big earnings coming up with NVIDIA and CrowdStrike. Okay, this is going to be August 28th. Um, obviously, CrowdStrike had a big, uh, I guess you could call it a snafu. If by snafu, you mean shutting off the huge portion of the internet. Um, but people are still expecting uh, some pretty decent returns, right? You have Delta is most likely going to sue CrowdStrike and Microsoft as well. Um, I know in the past I was saying Microsoft's not really their problem, but the more I kind of think about what occurred uh, with CrowdStrike, the more I kind of realize that Microsoft definitely knew what they were doing and CrowdStrike was getting around some of the limitations uh, that Microsoft had imposed. Now, the big question is, is how does this impact CrowdStrike going forward? Do they lose customers? I would argue no. They don't lose customers. It's very hard to switch from these different platforms, right? Especially when you're talking about their number one client, which is going to be very large companies. As it stands now, CrowdStrike has about a 23.46% uh, market share, essentially, compared to everyone else. And that's a and that's, uh, huge gain on the other ones, right? And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. You have stuff that happens like that, and they kind of realize what occurs, and um, people just kind of accept it and move on. I'm sure CrowdStrike uh, probably not do that again, because if they do, I think the CEO loses his head, uh, meaning he, he gets kicked out of the company. Um, he obviously oversaw the big failure um, in McAfee, you know, decades ago as well. You know, they're still punished, right? I mean, this is, you know, they're still punished for what occurred. This is going to be a slow movement back up. Um, but I think it stands uh, that that they're going to stay in there. Now, 
you had Palo Alto also come out with earnings, okay? And this is something that actually someone sent me an email in. It's like, hey, how about Palo Alto compared to CrowdStrike? Well, what I would say is that in reality, if you believe in this cybersecurity sector and investing in it and stuff like that, you can actually do both because they're not actually competitors. So let's take a look here. Palo Alto, uh, let's see, sees Q1 2025 EPS of 1.47 to 1.49 over consensus of 1.43. Q1 2025 revenue at 2.10 to 2.13 billion versus the analyst consensus of 2.10. Um, EPS of 618 to 631 versus 622, so that's kind of in line there. And then the revenue of 910 to 915 with a consensus on the lower end of 910. So, uh, you know, people really like that. It seems like it's probably some of the, all right, I'll, I'll tell you what it is, right? So CrowdStrike essentially does this native built in and more on the cloud kind of, um, you know, malware detecting, right? Where Palo Alto sits on layer two. So they, they deal with completely different layers. They're not really overlapping in a major way. Um, Palo Alto is looking really good. I think, you know, a really big shift into just focusing on layer two is interesting. I'm not sure how that results in them, you know, maybe competing with uh, Cisco or something like that. Uh, but as it stands now, Palo Alto had a fantastic returns, excuse me, fantastic forward guidance, trading up 6.3% uh, right now. I think this is, I, I, like I said, I talk about this, but this idea of what is like a future proof portfolio, right? We're not in the era of investing in GE or Ford or anything like that anymore. And it's still viable in a sense, maybe of, of, of holding some of your money, right? But but the big winners are not yet established, I don't think, right? And so I really think this era of cybersecurity, obviously AI to a certain extent as well. Um, and then we can even look right now at nuclear. We have nano nuclear catching a huge bid yesterday. Yeah, I mean, look, we're right now we're up 15%. This was 11.07 before the open, trading at 12.80. There's still a lot to be said with this. This is uh, super, this company in particular is risky, right? It's kind of weird where I believe that the whole... I believe the whole sector, uh, you know, I'm bullish on it on the long term, but individual companies, that's where it starts getting kind of weird, right? Um, this company still stands, you know, you, they could lose out on a bunch of cash, right? They're catching um, a deal in, uh, oh, I forget the African country's name, but to build these kind of small nuclear uh, energy reactors. Um, if that goes well for them, I, I think this extends out. You've seen um, some pretty positive talk uh, from legislators in America of building more nuclear energy. You saw with the Inter uh, Inflation Reduction Act, while it didn't really focus on uh, nuclear, it was certainly focusing on renewable energy, something like solar. Nuclear isn't technically renewable um, because you're not making more uranium or whatever they're gonna use. Um, but, but regardless, it's still green, right? Compared to whatever we're doing with crude and, and obviously coal's been on its way out for a while. I think companies like this can get a massive, a massive break in China as well. China's slowing down, but I think going forward, they're definitely looking at um, increasing their kind of portfolio uh, regarding energy production. Let's take a look at AMD. These guys are getting competitive. This is super cool, okay? So they're buying ZT Systems. This is gonna help them get kind of, okay, they're up 1.87 right now. This is gonna help them get competitive with NVIDIA in servers, okay? So AMD, this is on Monday, said it plans to acquire server maker ZT Systems for 4.9 billion as the company seeks to expand its portfolio of artificial intelligence chips and hardware, obviously and battling uh, NVIDIA. It plans to pay 75% of the ZT Systems acquisition with cash and the remainder in stock. So that's 4.9 billion altogether. The company had 5.34 billion in cash and short-term investments as of the second quarter. Computer crimes for AI have dictated that tech companies string together thousands of chips and clusters to achieve the necessary amount of data crunching horsepower. Stringing together the vast number of chips has meant the makeup of the whole server system has become increasingly important. They're basically, they have the neurons and they're trying to make the connections now to really create the brain. The addition of ZT Systems Engineer will allow AMD to more quickly test and roll out its latest AI graphics processing units uh, at the scale cloud computing giants um, such as Microsoft require. So yeah, this is pretty good here. We'll take a look. Yeah, so Jensen Huang, this is the CEO of NVIDIA. He said the company's developer conference, and this is for NVIDIA, in March that the one-time chip designer now creates and sells entire data centers 
or the individual components needed to build one. This year, analysts expect the company to generate 105.9 billion from its data center segment. So we're making computer brains at this point, and that's what AMD is trying to get into. Uh, and this might help them. Uh, this is something I'm gonna watch going forward. Uh, folks, stay right there. We have a short segment right after this break. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup uh, wrapping up the show for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, just on the break, I was looking at this ticker RSST. There, this is like portable alpha again. I guess return stacking now. Um, this, you're reading the Bloomberg article. It does actually a really good job of explaining what happened. Um, they're basically <laughs> returning, they're, they're stacking returns in a sense, right? Like the alpha is like what you gain based on your initial investment, right? So it's just kind of the gains. Obviously beta is the risk and stuff like that. Um, and I guess the portable alpha, which is the same thing as this return stacking. I, I guess they're just, this is like very interesting. So a lot of it's like, read what it says here. So a fund launched in September, for every dollar invested, the fund is designed to give a dollar's worth of exposure to US equities, because some of that is achieved through leverage, there's money left over. So like, <laughs> they're getting the return on the underlying stock and because they're leveraging their position, obviously, you know, you could do two times or even three times leverage. It's, it's gaining extra based on 
uh, what the dollar was on the underlying. That's that's kind of interesting. And you can see how stuff like that blows up when uh, the market goes the wrong way, right? A lot of the investments are uncorrelated. Um, so, you know, that obviously kind of like hedges against any you know particular downturn. What the guy said for this portfolio, he said, yeah, in 2008, it was rough because it was too over leveraged and too few positions. But I mean, a lot of these, you know, some extra stuff, right? Like if you're not doing leveraged or anything, it, I mean, you would still you would still use leverage, I would suppose, in some circumstance. But you know, investing in like bonds or whatever, um, you can still get really screwed. Uh, which I'm not sure how that eliminates the risk, right? If you have some kind of really big economic upheaval, um, and you know, you get bonds plummeting or you get bonds going up in price. Anyways, kind of interesting that now they're allowing this for just kind of the general investor as well. So that's RSST. If you're interested in any way about that. Um, let's see, looking at crude oil a little bit. This has been interesting. Now, Teddy Keck, that's going to come on to Tommy's show. I believe it's Wednesday. You've seen a really interesting, the, the operative floor is really 74, but you've seen like a true floor here of 72, but we just keep bouncing off it and China slowing down. Not a lot of people are traveling. Strange time for crude, uh, especially in the summertime. Folks, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all enjoyed it. Stay tuned for Basil up next.